Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's servant, St. Grace, bringing you the good news of Christ Jesus from rain. Amen. The Lord gave me this message in August, on August 14th, Monday, August 14th. The Lord said, go and talk to the women. Go and talk to the women. Every woman, all women, must honor their husbands. All women must honor their husbands. Maybe you have children with a man that maybe you are, you are divorced. Even if you are divorced, the Lord said you must honor your husbands. As a matter of fact, God hates divorce. So in the sight of God, he still sees the both of you as married. And so don't be, don't be poisoning your children's mind against their father, your ex-husband, and your married, still married husband in the sight of God. You may have been divorced. You may have divorced by the court system uh, through traditions or whatever it is. But in the sight of God, you are still married. And so this message still goes to you. The Lord said, we must honor our husbands. We must honor our husbands. Dear woman, Dear man, uh, whether you are married or married, you must hear this out. The Lord said, many women are going to miss the rapture. Many women are going to go to hellfire. If you don't send these warnings to them. Sister, mommy, auntie, you must honor your husband. I must honor my husband. All of us must honor the men in our lives. Why? Why must we? Because the Lord says so. Maybe you may be thinking, how dare you come and preach to me about that? What do you know about life? How old is your marriage? What do you know about what I have been through with this man? This supposed to be husband. How dare you talk to me about honoring me? How dare you talk to me about honoring him or respecting him? Of all, uh, of all the bad and the wicked things he has done to me. You may be older than me, Mama. You may be, uh, maybe my grandmother. But the Lord Jesus says his sheep hears his voice and they obey. Just hear what the Lord has for you. And if you're a sheep of Christ and heaven is your ultimate place that you want to be, then forget about who is speaking to you and And concentrate on what the Lord is telling you today. You must honor your husband. Please, let's get into the Bible, the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? 
she is more precious than rubies her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life she brings him good not harm all the days of her life again matthew 5 verse 9 says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman? Today I am speaking to all genuine virtuous women. If you've ever seen yourself as a noble woman, then check through the Lord's work and see where you fit in. Many women who go out there, they will go to church, they will bow to their pastor, the prophet, the bishop, the archbishop, the whatever title, the Roman father, the preeminent, whatever their titles are. But they will not speak kindly to their own very husbands. Any woman who dishonor their husbands, disrespect their husbands, you are directly disrespecting Christ Jesus. You can't tell me you're a woman of God you pray to the Lord Jesus yet in your own home you call your husband by his name if your husband is called Eric you call him Eric even with a commanding tone and go to the Lord Jesus and bow oh Lord Jesus no, you have disrespected the Lord Jesus when you disrespected your husband by calling him by his name, Eric, plus that commanding tone. On a normal, regular day, you call him Eric. On a, in a moment of anger, you call him, hey, Eric. Or whatever harsh tone you will add before or after going by his name I am not teaching about false humility but genuine honoring and respecting the men who are the men in our lives and I'm not speaking to an adulterous woman. If you are living with someone's husband, I am not addressing you. I am speaking with women that are properly married. Because if you are living and married to a divorcee, a man who has divorced their wives to be with you, I am not addressing you. Because that marriage is not recognized by God. And none of that will enter his kingdom. I am speaking with married women who are married to a single man. That are legally, rightfully, according to God's standard and the scripture. Yes. And to the young women who might be watching. You learn this and take it into marriage. You can never disrespect your husband if you have children. And before your children, not even, even when your children is around, uh, is, they are not around. 
and you address your husband by his name that's disrespect you are being disrespectful you are not a virtuous woman you are not noble that's not a noble character this is from the Lord Jesus you either call him Lord my Lord give him the mister that he is he is your master by God's standard he is your master not master as if you are a slave but he is the master he is the head he is your head he is your supervisor he's more than your manager and your supervisor God will make him answer to your soul and that of your children if there are children he is your master in the home in that marriage if you don't know this I am telling you the truth don't wait till it is too late Jesus told me yesterday that many are going to hell women say women must honor their husbands many are going are already there are still going and will go if you claim you're a woman of God you are preaching to people many women are under you but you cannot be under your husband you cannot submit you talk to him anyhow call him by his name Eric Charles K your husband is not your brother you can't call him brother brother yeah brother Eric no he is your master and your Lord if what is instructing you to do if what he is instructing you to do is not an act of disobedience to the word of God then you must humble yourself and do it if you want to make heaven woman if you want to make heaven ladies if we want to make heaven we must have total submission let the men in our marriages be the men of the house how dare you address your husband by his name raw ak aq You've coined something out of his name to call him. That's why you dis you dishonor him, you disrespect him. Because you think he's your co-equal. He is not. You and your husband can be best buddies. You are you are I mean you coming together, you came together with one one mind unique uh, to be united. That is perfect in the eyes of God. But that does not give you the, the scriptural right. And I'm saying scriptural because all the genuine believers in Christ, we are the custodians of the word of God, the scriptures. We must abide by it. We must be the word and become the word. You go and honor your pastor and bow, even bow your head when you are speaking to the pastor, that man of God, that bishop. You see a bishop with a, a, a high a status and you, you say that person's name and you are bowing with all false humility. Bowing to the bishop and the pastor, but you bow to your husband. You are not going to make heaven if you don't repent. And whatever you are, you are a hindrance. Your attitude is a hindrance to your prayer. And you keep wondering why whatever you've been praying about has not been answered. The Lord said, go and honor. Begin to honor your husband. Begin to submit with immediate effect. If you want the Lord to show up in your prayer. If you want the Lord Jesus to listen to you in the first place. Because you've jumped protocol. 
the Lord Jesus is the head of the church. And in the church, the, the men are, are the leaders. They lead and the women we follow. I may have an evangelistic ministry. I preach the gospel. That does not put me above my husband in my home. I must be submissive. I must honor him. I must be obedient. I must live in peace with him. And I must perform my wifely duties in its entirety. So you might be a woman pastor, but your husband may not. Or you may be a woman pastor just like your husband. That doesn't make him your co-equal. I speak with you with all humility. If you are a true sheep of Christ, then Jesus is talking, so please obey. Stop disrespecting your husbands. Stop dishonoring them. In front of your children, you talk to him rudely and harshly. What kind of spirit, what kind of lesson are you passing on to the children? Your children have no respect for their father. Why? Because you don't respect that man in the first place. Your husband may not have a job. You may be the one working at the current moment. That does not give you the right to insult him, to talk to him anyhow, to tell him to wash your panties, to tell him to wash the dishes. If he helps you wash the dishes, if he cooks, if he cleans the bathroom, if he cleans the toilet, that should not be the, the reason. Excuse me. My children brought some cold from school. It has made me to catch it. Excuse me about that. The fact that you are working and your husband is not working doesn't give you, doesn't make you the head of the family, head of household. Like you file your taxes and say head of household. No, no way. Under no circumstances, under no situation, condition, must you think you are the head of the family? You are not. You are not. Even if you, you, you got pregnant and the husband refused to accept the child and is not doing what he, he's supposed to do for you, not sending money, not calling to check on the child, that still does not give you any right to disrespect him, to dishonor him, to call him names, to say negative things about him to your children. You may think that you are doing them good by telling them the truth that their, their father is irresponsible, he's this and that. But trust me, believe you me, you are passing on to them a bad behavior. If they are women, they will take their young girls, they will take it, it will stay with them in their mind. They will take it into the relation, a relationship that could lead to marriages. It can mess them up, mess their lives up. When they are men, they will take it when they grow up. There are women who are able to even, to the point they can even smack their husbands, slap them in the face, kick them, do all sort of things. There are women, when they get upset, they have to uh, throw down a television, throw, crash a television, take a bat, 
a, a tennis bat, crush it into the man's car, destroy windscreens. That's the spirit of Jezebel right there. You need deliverance and you need it ASAP, immediately. You need to call us for deliverance. We need to cast that spirit of Jezebel from you immediately, lest you miss heaven. I'm not being judgmental. But the word of God is to rebuke, is to correct, and is to train. So if you are serious to make heaven, then you must be willing to take rebuke, to be corrected, and to be trained to righteousness through Christ Jesus. Why would you honor your pastor, the elder, the deacon, men outside your home more than your husband? Those from Africa, that man went to pay your bride price dowry to your father or whoever was there at that time. And before God, that is the acceptable way. And those in the Western countries, if you are living in US, uh, Europe, Canada, whatever not, maybe you may not have the culture where the man paid something to your family as a token of coming to take you as a wife to their homes, which they should have done. If they are Christians, culture or no culture, Bible says that the scripture, there are so many scriptures that makes us to understand that the man has to go and see, see the, the woman's family and pay something to honor them in honor of the woman they are going to live with. So if you are a Westerner and nothing like that was done, you just went to court, signed some document. And now you are living as whatever it is, you must make that marriage work. As long as you've it's been recognized by the church that you fellowship at. You must make that marriage work. You must be submissive. You must honor that man in your life. If you don't love him, why did you marry him in the first place? And then I'm not inciting divorce. I'm not saying if you don't love him, go and divorce him. Because once you are married, till death do you part. Not till when he becomes, when something happens and he smacks your face, you must leave. No. No. No, you must not. You must not. You may not. You should not. I'm not commanding you. But I'm telling you what the word of God says. I beseech you with the mercies of God. Value where your soul will spend eternity than the flashy things of this world. You must value where your soul will spend eternity. Your 40 years life with that man cannot be compared to your eternity in hellfire. If you dishonor your husband, and treat him anyhow. You go out there in the church, in the community, you speak highly of your husband. You, you paint a picture as if all is well at home, as if you truly appreciate this man, as if you honor and respect this husband. But when you come home, it's a sharp contrast. It's, it's the opposite of everything that you've said with your mouth to people. Oh, the, big, the impression you've given people outside. As if all is working. As if you love him so much. As if you appreciate, but you've never said any appreciative word ever in the marriage. The man is cooking for you. He's buying new things for you. You are over demanding your high expectation. He tries to meet all these high expectations, yet there's not even a thank you. Thank you by mouth. Thank you in a written note. Thank you sexually. You don't. Yet every day you are demanding. 
Yet every day you are telling me how much is not good enough for you. You must repent immediately. That's the spirit of Jezebel right now. I'm telling you in love and I'm telling you in truth. You need deliverance. If you have such problems, you need to call us ASAP for deliverance. You need to join the deliverance session in our ministry. Get delivered immediately. Before it is too late. Hell wasn't made for mankind. Jesus loves you. The Lord Jesus is warning all women. Don't put on scarf. Don't remove makeup. Don't put on clothes that come up to your neck here. And a skirt that is sweeping the floor. And think that that will take you to heaven. No. That will not. That will not. I'm telling you in truth. And I'm not saying that. Stop wearing those things. You cannot put on a physical modesty. But disrespect your husband. Talk to him anyhow. You are, you are not appreciative of him. You starve him sexually. And you think you will make heaven. You will not. You are dressing modestly and, and disrespecting and dishonoring your husband will not make you make heaven. No. Whoever is deceiving you is lying to you. Is truly deceiving you. And it's, going to, it's, it's not going to make you. You will not. You will not. No disrespectful people will enter the kingdom of God. Nothing like that. If this honor is in you, you will not make it. And I'm not being judgmental. This is rebuke in love. I'm speaking in truth. I'm speaking in love. I don't want to go to hell. And I don't want you to. When God gives me a message, I have no choice but to. Yesterday it was like a, something banging my head. The Lord said, go and warn them. They must Anna, their husbands. I don't know how many souls need to hear this, but you must share it. As you hear it, as a woman of God, take it. Do your homework. Share it with others. We must save ourselves. Women, through us, Adam fell from grace. Why must many women are making the, the men to, to fall into fornication, to adultery? Because of your character. In the night time, instead of sexually satisfying this man, you make them beg you for sex. The men are begging us for sex. When it is his right. By the standard of God, by scripture, that you should not deny him. Every day you have an excuse for him. Today you have headache. Tomorrow your breast is hurting. The next time, the next day, your, there's a, there is a, a pop uh, between your thighs so you can't open your thighs you can't open your leg for the man shame, shame, shame don't call yourself a noble woman don't call yourself a virtuous woman you cannot you cannot Jesus says shame on you the virtuous woman that the Lord describes says that he brings good to the husband any virtuous woman brings good to the husband, not her. If you are stabbing your husband sexually, you are harming him. Because if that man of that man fears God, he cannot go out. And many men are masturbating. Many married men are masturbating because the, the husbands have closed their, their vaginas. They will not open for men, the men to have sex. So that they will be satisfied in. And it is for them to have that. How many minutes would it take? It's not more than one hour. It's not more than that. Somebody will say, you, you don't know what my husband does. He, he's going to take Vi Vi Viagra and, and all these sexual enhancement and come and, and come and have sex with me for one hour, two hours. No, that is not a good act. If your husband has been doing that, you pray that the Lord will deliver him from that demons that make him do that. I have a video on that warning our dear men to, to desist from doing that. So show him that video when you come to our church platform on YouTube, Grace for Jesus Christ.
you, you said for that video, men using drugs for sex for, for their husband to watch so that the Lord will minister to them. That he's not pleasing with that. But regardless of that, that should not give you the right to, to disrespect him, to dishonor him, and again, to deny him of sex. No. Don't do that. Woman, let your heaven going be your number one priority. It begins at home. Not with the pastor. Not with that prophet. You go and pay money to prophets to, to prophesy on you. If they prophesy from morning to evening and you still disrespect your husband, dishonor him, nothing will change in your life. Those fake men of God will, will chop your money. They will eat your money for nothing. Absolutely nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's hard to live with children with common cold. I'm so sorry about that. So women, you must rise up from, from, from this, this thing. I have my right. I have my right attitude. Especially our African women. We've known honor and obedience to our men. But now the Westerners have taught us something else. The wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. Maybe you think you are a university graduate, you are a medical doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a teacher, you are whatever, but your husband has no degree. Your husband is just an A-level or some high school graduate or a JSS, a middle, middle school graduate. So therefore, your standard is higher than the person. Why are you married in the first place? Were you forced to marry? Even if you were forced to marry, you are married now. And the Lord is looking into that marriage to be honored. Especially you, the woman. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You call yourself a child of God, but you are the one that initiates conflicts in the home. Daughter against father. You are the one that initiated. You are poisoning your daughter's mind about that man. About your father. All because he refused responsibility of the pregnancy and he refused to take care of them or he's been hard-hearted with money and, and not coming forthright with you. No condition, no situation gives you the right to dishonor your husband. To disrespect your husband. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. Women, all women must honor. You the unmarried. If you're in a relationship that is leading to marriage. Please. Don't pretend to obey him now. And get inside the marriage. And turn to a tigress. And turn to a lioness on him you'll be judged according to your pretentious behavior whatever motive that you have as an unmarried woman going into that marriage you'll be judged by it god will judge that motive if you are pretending to him that you are submissive now so that he will come and marry you be careful don't enter and go and show him your true colors where you have haughty eyes he says one and you say ten None of that will make heaven. None of that will enter into the kingdom of God. We must honor the man in our lives. If you are living with somebody's husband, please pack your things and go back to where you are coming from. Because none of that make heaven. That will not lead you to heaven. That will not make you obtain eternal life. If you are married to a married man, you are fornicating with a man, please, I beseech you with the mercies of God, stop immediately. Pack your things and leave immediately. When your husband is training your children, disciplining them, when he leaves, you turn around 
and pamper them and tell them negative things about their father so that the children loves you more than the, their father and think their father is hard-hearted on them and so he doesn't love them and now they dishonor their uh, the, the, the father too because of you you are cursed woman curse is, is you because you make your children to disobey their, their fathers you are a stumbling block to them to them making heaven because on the judgment day there will be the, the young and the old all being given judgment so from that age that you are you are speaking nonsense into your 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 sons you are making your children both the boys and the girls to hate their father to disrespect their father you are a stumbling block jesus said curse unto those through them people stumble and fall if your children have the spirit of disobedience in them it is because you have over pampered them and you refuse the husband to discipline them i pray you you go on your knees ask the lord to forgive you go and apologize to that man go on you don't go and cry crocodile tears don't go and do crocodile tears Sister, mommy, don't go and do crocodile tears. Because God knows if he's sincere. If you've genuinely repented, God knows. If you are faking it, it's falsehood. You are pretending, God knows. Nothing is hidden before him. Do not mock God. You cannot. Whatever you are sowing now, you shall reap. You will reap it. And I pray that you won't reap it in hellfire. Now is the day. Now, this very moment, as the word of God has come to you, now is the time for restitution. Go before that man. Apologize. Maybe you are saying, sister, you don't know what my husband is doing to me. He kicks me. He smacks me. He slaps my face. He does this. He does that. After all is said and done, ask yourself, what led to this incident and i am not in support of men abusing women physically don't get it twisted sometimes women we the women we trigger something in them something that is long dead and buried our attitude just sit down and analyze what was my action what did i do for this man to slap me what did I say that provoked him so much that he slapped me, that he kicked me? Were you just sitting there doing nothing and all of a sudden he just came in and wham, 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 he smacked you? Is that what is happening? Let us know. Call me. Let us know. We will pray for all the women in our, in our abusive uh, uh, marriages. We, we, are, we, we will pray for them starting this Thursday the women ministry we will pray for all those men who are having insecurity and beating their wives but many of these beatings comes from what we the women we will do what triggers all that let's start from there Be before an action is taken before a reaction comes there must be an action action and reaction so if your case is that you'll be sitting there doing absolutely nothing to the man and he will just come in and smack you every day. You've not done absolutely nothing. You have cooked for him. Sexually, you've satisfied him. You do not talk to him rudely. You obey his instructions. If he tells you, oh, hey, my, my, my dear wife, go, don't go this way. Don't go that way. Don't talk to these strange people. Don't make these friends because it will not help you. And you are still going out with those friends. You are still doing the things that he says don't do. Men with their ego, ego or whatever that word is called, 
God gave them that ego. And if you are disobeying and disrespecting them, it will trigger something else in them. Please, for heaven's sake, some marriages are being marred and many are going to miss the rapture. Many are going to go to hell for this. Many virtuous women, many people who call themselves virtuous women, women with noble character, you keep asking, why is my husband not going to work with me, uh, church with me? Because of your attitude. Why would he go to church with you? What has changed in your attitude? You don't respect him. You don't honor him. So why should he go to church? What is being taught to you in that church that you don't demonstrate at home? We must be virtuous and modest in the heart, in the home, before it appears in the outside. Anna, we must honor all men, honor them. Even your little son, you must honor them and respect them. Talk to them in a respectful manner. So that the spirit of obedience will enter them, the spirit of honor. And respect will enter them. And they will take that into their marriages in the future if the Lord tarries to come. They are, your, your little girls will take that honor and respect into their marriages if the Lord Jesus tarries to come. Your husband will never follow you to that church because your attitude is stinking. You don't respect and honor him. You need to repent, mama, sister. You need to repent immediately change if you need prayers let's pray together and 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 cast out that jezebel spirit from you put away i have my right i have my right many women have lied on their husbands and now their husbands are in jail their husbands are in trouble their husband has been kicked out of the homes go and tell that government the truth the lies that you you said about that husband or that man of that man that has put him in jail. Go and confess your sin. Get that man out of jail. Get that man out of the street. You will answer to the Lord Jesus on the great day of, of judgment. You will answer. You shall answer. You will answer, sister. Please. Somebody say, oh, I, 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 I hate my husband. Because he won't change from alcohol. He will not read his Bible. I've been telling him, read your Bible so that you change from this way. You cannot change that man, sister. You cannot change that. Hating on him will not change him. Stop trying to change your husband. And let your good character, let your good character do the teachings, do the preaching. Where he will look at your good character and say, Ah, I see a new woman in this house. What happened? Where did I sleep? Where did... What, what came on? And then they will ask, sister, they will ask you, baby, sweetie, honey, whatever name they've given you, what has changed? Why this sudden change? He said, the Lord has spoken to me. I am now a virtuous woman. I am now a woman with a noble character. And I apologize for everything that I've done to you. The heart of the king is in God's hands. If your husband has been emotionally, mentally, psychologically, physically been abusive, it shouldn't trigger you to be disrespectful and to dishonor him. But it should trigger you to pray more, to be more of a virtuous woman where you'll be more obedient and submissive. Don't let that friend tell you you are not a slave. If you are scared of divorce, then you have a good marriage. So go ahead and divorce that person so that you get a better husband. It's the lie from the pit of hell. That sister, that friend of yours is, is the demon incarnate that has been sent into your life to get you into hellfire. Divorce is not an option. Divorce is never an option. It's not the last resort. Till death do you part. I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Come out, come down from that high horse. Haughty eye spirit. You are thinking, 
I when I married, I was an unbeliever. Now I know the truth. And I, I this husband, this man disgust me. I want to divorce him. I wish I'm out of the marriage. No, don't wish you are out of the marriage. Let the new truth that you find, you have found, change your attitude towards him. Love him the more. As you pray inwardly for the Holy Spirit who converts every heart to touch him and also transform him so that he will come to the truth. We will have the teachings for the men also on our church platform, Grace for Jesus Christ. The women ministry is going to be inaugurated this week, God willing. And we will have a lot of teachings for the women. You can uh, join in, come and listen. Not just listen, but be a doer of the word. May God help you to honor and respect your husband. May God remote your heart, reshape your heart, your life, so that you will not be a virtuous woman outside, just putting on a scarf, not putting on makeup or anything, but in action, in word, in, in every way possible. In every way possible. Where your husbands will give glory to the Lord. We're going to speak more of this. This is just the beginning. This is just part one. May God help you. May God help me. May God help us all. In Jesus' name. Amen.